What's going on, people? Welcome to Macola and House and Uncensored. I'm Macola, his house, and we are Uncensored. And today we are sponsored by Manscaped. And we'll be telling you more about Manscaped a little later on in the show, I'm and sure. We are still asking for the Doomy Gooch code. We are still asking for the Doomy Gooch code. So if you are watching Manscaped, you know. I'll what put it on a t shirt and wear it. Yeah, he, will, he actually will. Um, and he may show his Doomy Gooch. Doomy Gooch. It's not Doomy Gooch, yet. it's Paddock 20. But we'll get to that. In a bit. We're here to have a little chit chat, maybe talk about the Euros if we want, talk about Varane if we feel like it, talk about Jason Sanchez if we feel like that. Um, you got some decent gear today, which I liked. We can talk about that. Yeah, you've I gone, can't remember the name of You've gone company. very much to my, uh, I would have done that. That's kind of so my kind of gear. So, during Instagram, when you're just scrolling through and you get like a sponsored... Um, Based on your search results. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> So it's just <laughs> big butts usually, um, but I, I like like quite industrial clothing. I'm dressed like a pure skeleton. I've got fucking shorts on, fucking black socks, black trainers, pure skelly moves today. I'm going training after this, but I like like you know jeans, overshirts, like quite an industrial. It's fucking Northern Quarter, in it. You know the drill. I like that kind of shit, and this company, and it is obviously it's not sponsored in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. And I just looked at it because anyway. I like, I like, I like like a lot of olive green. I like a lot of fucking like real industrial sort of like jacket shirt type things. I, I wear them all the time. You're quieter than me. You what? You're quite, your dress sense is quieter than me. Yeah. I'm a bit louder. Yeah, yeah. You wear some fucking <laughs> absolute geography teacher hoodies that make me want to throw up. I'll question everything about you. Um, but, so I'm scrolling through and I see this and this guy's rocking a nice fucking top. I like that. And I click on the site. And then I click on it, and it's based in Glasgow. 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 And one of the tops says, Govan Shipbuilders Limited. And I go, oh, shit. And for everyone going, and? That's where Fergie did his apprenticeship. So if you watch um, Never Give In, uh, which I assume that's how, probably how you've got that search result. No, because I was, I was just, I was like, I'd been going through like Oi Polloi and a couple of like independent stores. Like I like my independent stores like that, and I like my independent brands that do stuff like that. Ollie and Sons and and some little spots like that do some smart gear. And I don't think it's in any way football related. They're just a Glasgow company, and Glasgow, the Clyde, they're known for shipbuilding. It's like mm. it's like going to a Manchester-based clothing company. Oh, they've got a B look. Of course they fucking have. That's their yeah. thing. Yeah. So Govan Shipbuilders probably just did it because it's a part of their fucking heritage. But for United fans, I went, oh my fucking god, get in my basket. That's yeah, that's <laughs> that's some good shit. You might see me with the same top on later. Um, but yeah, that's a nice little story about Steve Shapin on Instagram. For you, like, if also, you want to do some shopping on Instagram, um, there's there's some good shit about you. Know. My Shopify. Um, I got I got a thingy on Fred, um, not Fred, but Thread, um, where they can send you like you, know, you can customize like chinos and jeans. You've been sewing again? No, customize them to whatever size that you need. I got big fucking rugby player thighs, man. None of your fucking little fucking. My whatever. thighs are quite big. I know yours are massive, double the size, but it's like. My arms aren't representative of my legs. I got some V12s on. <laughs> so I, 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 I gripped some. Like I just tried them jeans on, fucking super tight on the quads. But I just ordered from a different spot um, some uh, some custom chinos. So there you have it, guys. We're coming here to talk about Steve's pants. Mate, and it's, tops it's, it's fucking. It's loose women for men. It is. It is. We are loose men <laughs> again. Um, <sighs> It's happened again, Steve. What? It's happened again. What's happening in there, by the way? It sounds like carnage in sounds there. Sounds like WrestleMania. It's almost like we it's not a place for work and we film here every day, you know, like just common room in there, bell ends in there. Um, England have been knocked out of a tournament again. Oh. Obviously in a final, Colour which has never shocked. happened before. Um, yeah, ever. Actually, it's it's quite, never lost it was the quite final good before. to see that, innit? And have that. I got into it for the penalty shoot. I'm on Sally. He's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to myself. I got into it for a minute, uh, and uh, by the end of the penalties, I kind of wanted England. I kind of wanted England to win, kind of. But here's the thing: when they don't, I don't give a fuck, and I don't. I am over it. See, I care, but I'm over it almost. So that day, I was proper disappointed. 
proper sad. It was a big chance, especially for Rashford and Sancho and all that. I was gutted for them. Um, More nervous about them taking penalties um, just because I knew the backlash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's interesting is the, the fucking way some of the papers, like The Sun, have sort of reacted to it. And you're like, hang on, you fucks. <laughs> <coughs> you were the main instigators. We know what you're doing. You were the main instigators of this shit in previous tournaments. Don't fucking give it holier than now, now, that a handful of people have been dicks online about them. And they were also one of the main instigators into the treatment of Raheem Sterling and other people like that. Um, Even if you look look beyond that and you look at the treatment of David Beckham after tournament, Phil Neville after tournament. And it brought me Mm. back there, you know. And like... I did a, we, we did that chat on the kickoff a, what, a few weeks ago and I said like, for me it's always club above country explained why I feel that way, explained how I feel after England lose. Yes, I'm disappointed, but I'm over it immediately. And I, apart from the go back to your own country vibes that were in a lot of the comments, I got a lot of stick for that. And it was like, now you see why. Like, now people should see why. And someone sent me a message actually, which like, I haven't even replied to it. I read it. Um, and it was quite an interesting message. Like, let me find this. Um, and he was like, I understand now why. Look, he was like, I remember on some show, you and Harrison talking about feeling like you don't fit in with England fans. I've always felt that way. However, since 2018, I really got behind the England team. I hoped they would bring about positive change. I genuinely thought about that happening as well. I made it my mission to go to the Euros. I went to Scotland. I went to the semi. The final, however, destroyed everything for me. <laughs> and it's like everything from that fallout reminded people how they fell out of love with following England. This, from 2018 onwards, I would agree to a certain extent. It's still not in me. Like, it's still not my team. And I still, Shout out, Michael. Um, I still watch it at arm's length <clears throat> and don't get swept up in it. But from 2018, I remember during the World Cup, it was a likeable bunch of players. And that's continued, and I'll give Southgate that credit at least. I think he, him as a statesman has done really well, and what they've done as a group of players has made me like them, and I never liked oh, fucking Steven Gerrard and fucking even Shearer, if I'm being honest. Fucking never really talked to him. Whereas this England team, even though they play for rivals, don't really hate any of them. Um, they're a likeable bunch of lads. And a, a, another reason they're likeable, see like Ming's coming out, basically, not in as many words, coming out and saying, shut the fuck up, essentially, to all these Tory saying MPs. fuck the Tories. Um, <laughs> and I got a lot of time for shit like that. And I, I like that these players are less media trained than the year in fucking... No, they Rooney are boys. as media trained, but they are also self-aware. Yeah. And they're aware of how important it is that they stand up. We went from 70s footballers who were just fucking mayhem, smacking their missus about and fucking dropping M-bombs all over the place, right? And then you get um, the the Premier League era comes and everyone gets media training and fuck off, you've got to be beige and that's why Jamie Redknapp and Michael Owen are on fucking TV and it went too far. Mm. And you have to have flavour. You still got to have flavour. Maybe not Gaza, maybe Mm. not George Best. Maybe not Maradona, but you've got to have flavour. And, you know, Jack Grealish has got flavour. Harry's n- not involved in that team more as a joke. Sancho's man. clearly got flavour. Marcus Rashford's got flavour, but it's different. He's authentically him. Mm. He, he's not record. He's going on the piss. I mean, like Jack Grealish was doing shots on Tuesday morning. Yeah, love it. Yeah, I got all the time. He's just fucking finished the tournament. Crack on, mate. Like, you're not going to see Rashford doing that, but he's got... But you know Southgate looks at Grealish and thinks that's why... You don't, even though he's doing that in his own time, out of Daryl Southgate's never done tequila ever. Yeah, never. The fucking Just boring talk bastards. About when that England squad were having that party, he went to his room, which kind of says why he's England manager, isn't it? It kind of explains. Ooh! Why. Right, do you know what? We had Shearer in here, didn't we? A couple yeah. of weeks ago, and it was my intention. Uh, unfortunately, he had a he had a fucking speaking thing to do, like right after. So he was really conscious of the time. My ambition was to clear this fucking lot by doing a dentist chair with Shearer. That was like Someone a lifetime ambition Gaza. that I had for about a fortnight. <laughs> Someone did one with Gaza. I can't remember who it was. I like him as well. Bucket list shit. <laughs> but no, but it's like you don't do that to a recovery now, got it? Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't think of that part. <laughs> no, I didn't. I just missed that bit. Yeah, no. Mm, <laughs> 
Yeah, not doing that. No, but Shearer. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's just a fucking top night out. And that's one of those fucking would I lie to you stories for everyone. Yeah. I did the dentist chair of Alan Shearer during the Euro 2020. No, you didn't. No, well, fucking did. Sure, <laughs> right. But I think like, of course, Gareth Southgate went to fucking bed. Mm. Shearer was telling us, and he, it, Shearer likes a Bev. Shearer's real. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it, it might tell. not be wild, but he's real. Mm. And you, you know can know tell he, he's a bit of a snide as well. Really, luckily. Probably, yeah. Snide. But he's also pretty fucking real. Mm. And I think you kind of get what you get with him. And whether he, he asked about what you think or not, I think you get what you get with him. Whereas. And to be fair, you might get what you get with Southgate. And that might be fucking T-shirts up to his underpants and reading a fucking book at night at 9.30 and get the light out, no blue light before I go to bed. You fucking boy. Do you bastard. think, though, Southgate's reputation goes before him kind of like with Oli? Where people assume a certain... He's a certain way when maybe he isn't. Like, because Oli's <laughs> assumed he's, he's too nice. He's not a shagger, is he? No, but I'm not... That's not what I'm saying here. <clears throat> I'm saying people assume he's too nice or assume he's a certain way. In the same, like I see people compare them as managers, which I think is unfair because Ali gets this England team playing a better brand of football. But oh there's a lot God. of similarities Not only that, he in how actually they're tactically judged. wins fucking games. Can you give me one instance where Southgate tactically won a game? His tactics are shit. Mm. Anytime he went behind in the game, well, we just lost. It reminds me of Mourinho <clears> when we were four in FC. Who? Southgate. So at the end, sometimes, at the end of some games, you have some fans going, just beat him 4-0. Oh, what are you oh. fucking amazing? It, but if you watch that game, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was and it was the subs that opened it up. An uh, uh, interesting point that I wanted to make on Tyrone Mings and Marcus Rashford. And I love those guys. And you know what? Why I think it's a little bit different with them not just being towing the line and that. Because you see Steven Gerrard and Wayne Rooney and all that. They didn't have to. You see, like, the position that I'm in, and we can probably... Com compare and contrast this. The position I'm, I'm in as an Asian man, and there's very few Asian men doing what I'm doing, I feel I have to set certain examples or do certain things. Or you know what I mean? Sure like, you can, there's like Rambo, I think, but that's <clears throat> it. Like, there's not a lot out there. So like, I feel in order to set the trend or set an example to those that go after me, I kind of subconsciously have to and that's why I'm unapologetically me. I won't censor myself. I won't do those things. Because if I do, then everyone else that follows me probably has to do that. That's how the footballers think in it. So Tyrone Mings, Marcus, whereas Wayne Rooney's and Gerrard's, they don't have to show out or stand or make a point or set an example, do you get me? Because, and that's how I think these boys are looking at it. They and I think came in great. a weird era, just as sort of like social media was a thing. And like I said, media training and be beige and brand safe was like a massive sort of thing. Like the Premier League era, the Premier League kicked off with sanitize the stadium, sanitize this and package this. And like when you find out like Keys and Grey were wearing like fucking mustard colored suits and stuff was on purpose. Like you understand how this was all packaged and presented to you. And it wasn't necessarily as authentic as it came across. Mm. A lot of the kickback of that is, now Beckham's maybe the perfect example of this. When have you ever heard Beckham give an opinion? Mm. I even remember he put the green and gold scarf on and then proper retracted it. He doesn't give opinions because yeah. he stays in the middle. Yeah, like, toes the line. It's like Michael Jordan saying, well, Republicans buy sneakers too. Mate, and he's like, lost the fucking mind. Like people wanted him to, and he's like, I don't respect that, <clears throat> but I understand it. And I suppose a lot of other people are in that, isn't it? Yeah, and I think nowadays the players have either been given permission to or maybe even agencies have realised you do, I mean, like, um, so we're, we're planning some stuff with Rio's channel for going forward, and we was talking about uh, an evolution of a show that we want to do, which I won't give the details away just yet, but it's about bringing in current footballers to do something. And I said, with no disrespect, who the fuck was getting Watford's goalkeeper to come and fucking join him on a podcast mm. until he put himself out there by doing something. Showcase his personality. Yeah. And now his personality, you go, oh, this fucking lunatic's bagging into cycling mm -hmm. and he's got a bit of personality in that, a bit about him anyway. No one would have had a fucking clue what Ben and Foster was about. He told us he was coming on and then start replying to our DMs. Come on, man. I mean, if you want to... I know where you live. Ben Foster cycling GK or whatever he's called on Instagram, at him someone, not abuse. No, we don't do abuse. But Look. just say, 
Do you want to follow up that? I mean, the only one that we ever really abused was Michael Owen, and the curse is gone. So and he deserved it. I mean, he killed a rabbit. We're all good. Anyway, so we were talking about the, this opportunity to, to let people have their voices out there. And I think people are less afraid. Footballers especially are less afraid. Like the Beckham Bay sort Tribune's of a great example, isn't it? Yeah. And I suppose what you're talking about is kind of the video version of that. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. So we've done... We've had Beckham, and it, out, out of him followed Rooney. Rooney's fucking wild, right? You've never heard him give an opinion either, really. Yeah, and, and he, I he know used he's got to, someone. Because he used to say things like, why did we sing about the Queen? <laughs> Remember when you say that? I'm sure he said he didn't little. like the national anthem. He could never come out and say that when he was England captain. Because yeah. you have to tell that line. Of course. And I think that, that I, I like the fact that we're moving to an era where there's more authenticity, more and more authenticity. Do you think social media is a part of that? Yeah, of course. A big be. part. Because if Rooney has social media, he's well, he not did. hiding. He did not mean, took the password off him. But like, do you know, the early Rooney has social media, he's not hiding his real self. David Beckham, he's maybe not getting away with a few of the things that the papers cover for him and maintain his image. And, you know, like, there's a lot of things that. There's go a lot Western. of deals done. Yeah. We maybe don't report on this. We want some photos of your kids. It's a fucked up economy, but it happens. Mm. It happens. I mean, there's, you get story, you get told stories all the time. I mean, even us with what we do, like we hear things that we don't necessarily put out there, <laughs> even because there's not enough evidence. We don't believe it or whatever. And you can see that happening there. But yeah, the, the media protected a lot of those players, but at the same time, also tore them down. Yeah, which was weird. A, weird. It's like the. The and front pages, and that's why and the back page there's power in what the likes of Marcus, and to an extent what Jaden did because he came out and spoke about it. There's power in what those players are doing. You even saw uh, like a fucking Twitter account rephrase what Marcus had said in an interview and go, and he came out and went, "I didn't fucking say that." Oh yeah, I remember. Was it about joining Real Madrid at some yeah. point? And I think he was just like, if you ever played abroad, who would be? And he was like, I, I wouldn't mind playing for Real Madrid. And, and it was like, United's are not an option. You've got to pick one. He was like, well, Real Madrid then. And then they packaged it like, Rashford wants to call Real Madrid. Yeah. And he was like, no, I didn't say that. You're completely taking me out of context. The players are not afraid anymore to set right the wrongs. But it sets a rough precedent because if they are thinking about a move one day and someone goes, oh, Rashford's linked with Barcelona and he just goes. Yeah. Then it's like, hold on, last time. Yeah. So it's a weird precedent to say. Kind of like with Pogba and that French thing that happened with the French team and he came out immediately and was like, oh, no, that never happened. Yeah, and yeah. then people were like, well, hang on then. <laughs> but yeah, so you set a rough precedent. I mean, like, you, you have to make a decision. Do you, do you respond to every fucking bit of bullshit that goes out there about mm. you or do you respond to nothing? Or just serious shit. Um, can we get the old Manscaped read, please? I'll Manscaped. get you the old Manscaped read. Um, Paddock 20 is the code. Make sure you check out their website. Um, make sure you are, of course, looking after the boys. Right, downstairs. I'll tell you what it says. We've got a sports package for you here, right? The Olympics, the Euros, major championships and concerts, apparently, yeah, you need to are all in this summer. But do you know what isn't? A wild and airy bush. <laughs> Tame your pubs <laughs> with our help and the help of our friends at Manscaped. The leaders in below the waist grooming. They look after all the See UFC me doing boys my nose as well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Put it. I put it into the, the group with everyone. I was doing my old fucking Uta. The third generation performance package includes the flagship lawnmower 3.0. If an athlete treats their body like royalty, why not treat your pubes like Olympic gold? And we've heard some some exclusives as well. Have we? About what's coming soon. So oh. you want to get signed up to Manscaped? Yeah, you do, yeah. totally Listen, do the right, do right by your balls and join two million men. <laughs> two million. <laughs> two God million. Damn. Um, who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com listen we're going to sort you out with some free shipping because it's a ball bus paying for shipping and also you get 20% off with the code paddock20 link for all that is in the description listen we're allowed out now you've, you've been allowed to fester and there's no excuse now. for 18 months right the first time you pull your <laughs> out for the right you've got to have it <laughs> right Simple. You can't, yeah, you can't, there's no excuse of, you know, uh, it's COVID, it's lockdown. No, you know, not anymore, it ain't. 
There's no excuses. Cut final time. It's you summer. bring your A game. And even if you're not going to meet a special someone, a special person, and get down some action, even if it's just you tugging your meat every night, <laughs> you need it to be clean. You need there to be no sweat about. And, and let's have it right, right? There's a fucking heat wave coming next week. That's all I need to say. 21st century, man. Do you want your balls under two inches of water or do you want them <laughs> smooth and fresh and talked? Actually, you have to have a piss in it. No, I'm saying? Piss on your balls. Uh, anyway, the lawnmower 3.0 is going to take the podium. See, that's a sports reference. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a third generation trimmer. It in, includes cutting edge ceramic blade technology it's got a to reduce it. grooming accidents. Thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It's also got a 7,000 RPM motor. That's the. That's that you the car. And an LED spotlight. What? I'm going to be honest. I don't need the light. You do need the light. I don't need the light. You do. I don't do don't my. Do gooch I don't do my dark. gooch in the dark. <laughs> Call me old fashioned. Yeah, but there's those. There's those crevices and those no. little spaces that have, do get listen, covered by have, shadow. But. I have adequate lighting. So okay, so the lights here, yeah. My bathroom's you're, all white, though. You're going like this to look at the old boys. Wait. Your head has come over Wait. and, and created oh. a shadow. Listen, that light... Here's what you're not getting right. Shadow. I was inverted. Okay, I, mean, I ain't got them skills. Anyway, the package also comes with a weed whacker to chop your worst weeds in top, uh, both your nose and your ear. Uh, it's a tool that is a lot to take home gold in the biathlon, apparently. See, more sports references. Who wrote this, lads? Come on, play the game. <laughs> the Weed Whacker's also waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor. We've gone up a bit now. And a 360 degree rotary dual blade system. Do you know what? If you want, we'll throw up. In fact, didn't we send it to the members? Didn't the members in the community page get a, the photograph of me doing my schnoz? Yeah, fact, they should have. If not, it's probably on here. Let me just. Find if not, it. we'll get it on us. Because I took it on here, so it should be on here. Let's have a look. <laughs> Listen, this is not even messing about, not even playing games. I use this product. <laughs> <laughs> Paddock20 at manscaped.com. Hey, Make sure you go and check it out. 20% off, off and free shipping. Thank you very much to Manscaped, Manscaped. for supporting us. 20% off. And you know what? Since the takeover, yeah, since we took over and. They've, they've supported us a lot, so thank Brilliant. you very much on a serious And our note. balls have been spotless since then. For sure. Uh, Rafael Varane. Our clean sheets could be spotless. Work on that. Yeah, Rafael yeah. Varane. Wouldn't lead with that. <laughs> Rafael Varane um, doesn't feel like a player that we sign. It feels, it feels like we should be getting done over here, doesn't it? Yeah. Is this like, this is the early days of eBay, isn't it? And what arrives is a fucking... Well, my friend used to sell things and not send them. Was a st what arrives is a fucking brick <laughs> in a box, in a Blackberry box. <laughs> oh, of bastard. <laughs> Been had again. That happens at in. the service stations now, doesn't it? Reckon. Someone pulled me over the other day and he's like, do you want to buy a laptop? I was like, <laughs> I don't want to buy water. <laughs> I do not want to buy water. That happened to me in a service station about 15 years ago, though. Guy yeah, pulled up and was like, do you want to buy a watch? And I was like, what? Yeah, watch. Shit, watch. And he was like, watch. Whipped it out, took a screwdriver out, started drawing on the face of it and went, look, I've never done that to a watch. <laughs> what is he saying? No scratches? Yeah. I was, just, I was just like, oh. that, mate. <laughs> oh. Cool. So Varane. Yeah. Is he a brick in a box? Or is he... Is it a brick in a box? Or, or is, is he, he one that we get to peel the film off? You know the noise that that shit makes. I love that. Yeah, it's my favorite shit. About I buy more shit to just do that again. I, I try and leave it on for as long as possible. Oh fuck that shit. Indians do that. My granddad Sofas bought, and that. bought no, a like, TV probably in two thousand and ten, and his remote still got the plastic round it. <laughs> probably shit. <yeah. laughs> and I go there every day, and I'll be like, I'm taking this off today because underneath that's a brand new remote. Yeah, <laughs> it's seventeen years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, let us know if your parents do that. But yeah, Varan, it does feel like it's getting very real now. I've gone from this looks possible to this isn't happening. Stop being stupid. To now, I'm just waiting for the announcement. I'm waiting for the here we I'm go. I'm not there yet. Have I gone too far? Yeah, I'm not. I'm gonna pull you back a little bit. Gonna, yeah, you would. I'm gonna rein you in just a touch because I think there's probably only us in this race by the looks of things. 
And you got to be real about it. Who else is in the market for 300 grand? Well, there's rumours about PSG, but that's unlikely, isn't it? We've nah. got Ramos and all that. PSG, as much as Ancelotti's maybe a big deal. Has he even been announced there yet? Ancelotti's going Real Madrid, bro. Oh, why do I keep thinking he's going Paris? Whatever. Like, <laughs> as much as... Um, oh, yeah, because it's that fucking witch from Spurs, isn't it? My mistake. I thought he was a good coach. It, even that fucking donut is going to struggle to come second with them this year. PSG? Yeah. Oh, struggle to come second. I thought you'd yeah. struggle to win the league. Yeah, he got a good team in it. Like, he could fuck up really bad and still win the league. Like, he could absolutely toss this off completely. He could spend 90% of his time spinning around it's in his fucking It's not about winning the league, though, is it? Don't matter, though. He's still probably going to win a fucking league somehow. It's insane. And that somehow validates everyone's shit opinion Ronaldo. about the guy. Um, I think Ronaldo's going there in a big way. I don't want to see him go there. You know, Unlucky. It's close to us though. We could go to a game. Paris it's like two trains away. Yeah. Do you wanna? Shit Paris way. is a shithole though, isn't it? Paris, shithole. You live in Birmingham. Yeah, Paris is a shithole to Birmingham. Well, I think the jury's out on that to be honest. No, I'll be, uh, bro, put this to a poll. I guarantee you Birmingham's better than Paris. <laughs> Paris is a shithole, bruv. I promise you. Oh, Eiffel Tower. Oh, we go shopping. Oh, look at us all fancy taking pictures. Take a picture. Go, go somewhere else take a picture. You can't because it's shit. <laughs> it's a shithole, bro. Sorry. Been, it is. I went, I went, I didn't like it. I liked Bordeaux. I liked Nice. I did not like Paris. Nice is nice, right? It, it's, nice is nice. I also learned that's where they make them biscuits. Fuck off. So the biscuits aren't called nice biscuits. They're called nice biscuits. Shut up, you dickhead. I promise you, bro. <laughs> Them biscuits that we've been calling nice biscuits no. for all our lives, sure. they're called nice biscuits. <laughs> they are from Nice. I did some skiing around Nice. The beach in Nice is shit, though. It was nice. It's pebbles. <laughs> no one wants a pebble beach. The, the Southern Alps. Just the, from like Nice to Turin, nothing. Just a bit of, bit of rock in the middle. Did some skiing there when I was in the army. It was the uh, British Army Ski Championships. Are you being serious? 100%. I was away for 16 weeks on full pay, just Actually, fucking I've allowed Actually, I've heard this story before. It was mint. Loved it. I can't so remember why. Our I had, taxpayers to, going I had to, to fly back for some reason. I flew back from Turin, and shit. I got fucking stuck in Turin for ages, and there's a uh, funny old thing. Uh, Juventus shop in the airport, just fucking remember just mooching around there. It's like 2004 or five. Five. Did Ronaldo flop at Juve? Fastest player to ever score 100 mm -hmm. goals for him. I'm going to say no. I knew that. Uh, my answer to that is no, but people always have different. Oh, people suck. Because people would, some people would say Pep doesn't win the Champions League at City, he's flopped. So I mean, if Ronaldo doesn't win the Champions League at Juve, has he flopped? <laughs> no. They gave him shit to work with, innit, when he went there. He must have been thinking, bruv, we've had Al Allegri this whole time and now I've got. Pirlo. P Can we talk about Pirlo? People didn't like Pirlo till he grew a beard, didn't it? What? No. Pirlo's always been a bang banger of a player. Always. He's always been a good player. But he's never been top five midfielders. And he's never been... <coughs> it was Till he grew a beard and took pictures in vineyards and shit. People didn't care about him. Oh. I, I got no dog in this fight. I like him. I like him. But I'm just saying. I like... The the people running around saying fuck. stuff like, oh, he's better than this and he's better than... He's not. He's not better than Seydorf. Because Seydorf was the man in that midfield. Is it one of them where one doesn't work without the other? Maybe. But I just feel like this whole hipster Seydorf thing around him... three Champions Leagues at three different clubs. First player to do it. Pretty gangster. AC Milan, Real Madrid and... Ajax. Ajax. As a teenager, I think. Under, Ajax, under the Louis. Ajax team was good, innit? Good. Van der Sar, Yari Littman and um, Clive. You know what's mad? When Littman went to Liverpool, he wasn't really respected still, was he? Uh, no, he kind of was like the big, big fish coming out of... Uh, after Cliver, he was like the big thing. And I think, was it after Burkamp? When did Burkamp leave him? Was it like 91, 92? Well, he left him in 91, but he didn't get there till 92 because he couldn't fly, the fucking idiot. <laughs> um... And you that have a cheek try put him in your top fives. Premier League Hall of Fame. If he has to fly there, no. <laughs> Premier League Hall of Fame is a weird one. Imagine that, having a player like that, don't fly. Don't, won't go. We've got to play 
Galatasaray next week. Cool. Welcome to hell. Cool. I'll be here. I'll get the train now or I won't. Like he only played a ways where you could get a tunnel to or drive to, innit? Mad that. Does that put him down in your estimations? It's weird. It's a it's a factor, isn't it? it How's it not a factor? Do you think that prevented better clubs from signing him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you've got Ajax, you've got Inter Milan, you've got Arsenal, you've got some banging tier yeah, two yeah. football clubs there. <laughs> tier two. And Arsenal. <laughs> oh, well, they're oh, not a tier one football club, are they? Mm. You're just not. You're Who not. is the best international player ever? I feel international football, club football is two different things. Right, I've had a whole thing on this and people just, because they don't, they don't understand words and they've been fed propaganda and a narrative. They won't change the narrative despite the fact that they've got no evidence to support the narrative in the first place. <laughs> Paul Pogba and Zidane are on a level. There's my fucking narrative for you, right? And I'll tell you why. I can, I can. For I international can football, this. Zidane was fucking mint and he always delivered for France. In between him winning the World Cup in 98 and him winning uh, the Euros in 2000, he was a fucking bag of wank, right? He was the best player at Juve when they won the league, I think 98, and he was the best player at Real Madrid 2003, I think, when uh, they won the league. And then after that, I don't know where he went partying, I don't know what he did, he was fucking gash. One season for Real Madrid, he had more red cards than assists, or, yeah, more red cards than assists, and he had as many goals as own goals. <laughs> Imagine Paul Pogba in a season like that. Mm. This isn't to say he didn't have moments, because he had some sensational moments, and, and for Real Madrid, he had some fucking world-class moments. But you can say the same about Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba has had I some get where you're world-class from. moments. It's harder because of because he's finished his career, Zidane. And you're right, since he's retired, he has, I think he's elevated in everyone's estimations. And when you look at the moments well, this isn't like to that say that I, I don't, I'm, this isn't me saying, because people are going to say, Steve just said he's done shit. No, I didn't. That's you claiming Pogba shit. I think him and uh, Pogba, in terms of ability, are on a similar level. Similar, not the same, right? What I'm trying to say is, both of them have been more consistent internationally than they have been for their clubs. Both clubs, that's Juventus and United for Pogba and Juventus and Real Madrid for Zizou. Mm -hmm. But they've both been mega for France. And obviously both of them won the World Cup. Interesting. So there's your title, if you're looking for. Manscaped, <laughs> Maybe not. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> um, because here's the thing, people are going to misrepresent what I've just fucking no, said. No, no, I, you know what, because up. I've thought, because the other day I saw people argue, I see people arguing all the time. It's just different and someone, as well. I saw someone that's younger than me arguing about Zidane. And I remember thinking, I can guarantee you have not seen more than 10 games of Zidane. And I have do. you seen, have you seen any, Juve and, that. and have you seen any in person? Because I've seen him in fucking person several times. I seen him in person get bossed off the park by Roy Keane, bitch. Anyway, um, I know we never did the podcast together this week. So who's your wallet of the week? Southgate. And I'll tell you why. Thanks for asking. His fucking handling of young players is fucking pathetic. We saw what it was like when he, he threw uh, Greenwood under the bus by making him do a press conference. Then his handling of Greenwood and Foden having a bird back to the hotel. Oh, well, they broke COVID rules. Right, let's not pretend it's not happened a thousand fucking times. He, the way he handled that for both mm. players was fucking well wrong. And there's differences in treatment since between the two as well. Is odd. I agreed. And then, putting a 19-year-old... I think this is an important distinction. Saka's penalty wasn't the win-it penalty. It was the don't-lose-it penalty. The pressure on that. Now, whether or not you'd picked your five... I think as it unfolded, wait. Can I ask a yeah? That, so the question I was about go, to ask was, uh, can you change Saka at that point? I think you can until he starts walking, and even if he has started walking, because it's not a thing where you write him down, is it? I don't think you have to fucking submit your. Yeah, tables. you don't do that, do you? So I mean, if that's if I'm wrong on that, I'm wrong on that. But as it's unfolding, I don't think you allow a 19 year old to have the lose it penalty. Also, also, and people might think this is oh Adam, you just love him. Southgate's tr treatment and overlooking of Jack Grealish is embarrassing, bro. And Sancho. Like, 
much at winners, the penalties, giving them a fucking minute. But also, and people will go tournament because Sol- Solskjaer also lost the penalty shootout. Here's the difference: United didn't play for a penalty shootout. England did, and also at no fucking point in that Villarreal game did United have Jack Grealish, Marcus Rashford, and Jason Sanchez sitting on the fucking bench. Those, those three were my three behind the striker. And yeah, the the and my striker might have been Calvert Lewin <laughs> if I was picking. Can you believe that? Can you, can, can you and he was cowardly in terms of his... Right, did I think Kane played well as an individual? Yes, I do, actually. I think he's, he was very effective. But if you're looking at it from a team performance, we've got playmakers. Playmakers, I think, actually are better than fucking Harry Kane. Harry Kane, you're in this fucking squad to be a, to be a striker. Go be a fucking striker. So the person who's a better striker might have actually been Calvert-Lewin because it had been where a fucking striker's meant to be. England had, what, one or two shots, one on target. Not enough. Mm. And when, all right, if, if you've Kane's twatted a, a team, as well, if you've twatted a team and your striker's doing bits on the halfway line, I don't give a fuck. But ultimately, if I've had one shot on target and my striker's doing fucking pirouettes in the fucking centre circle, fundamentally wrong. So fuck you, Southgate. Absolute also, fucking witch. And you're a shit on a night out. I guarantee it. My wall of the week's Harry Kane. What, when does he turn up in a big game when it matters? People try and put him up there just below Ronaldo and Messi and below all these players and along Neymar's and that. Hey, throw this one at you. If City buy him this summer, after the World Cup, Flapsky. and after the Euros, he was injured for about 50% of the following season. Listen. He's going to be injured next season. Champions League final, where was he? <coughs> League Cup final, where are you? Where was he? He probably watched it at St. George's Park. Euro final, where are you? <laughs> You know what I mean? The, the, these, sorry, Ronaldo wins one of them on his own. And I, I can point that at my team as well. We've lost finals I and I think he's fucking selfish. It's cool. Yeah. He's selfish. He's stink. And you made him captain. Harry Maguire should be captain slabhead. What a penalty that was, the by the way. Fuck it out. But one day he scares me he's going to smash one out of the stadium. Oh, no doubt. No. Risk or reward, mate. <laughs> yeah. That's the game. <laughs> it's fucking great. What, one day he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna knock a fucking plane out of the air. Do you reckon the BT, whoever was filming that, I thought, fuck, camera's gone. Like, That's why we have insurance, our kid, and I'll sell that for a story. Anyway, here's the um, camera. If you're the one, you're selling that camera for here's the camera Harry Maguire bloke. When you lose, you go, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Broke the camera. Um, Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, liking, commenting, sharing. Of course, as well, Manscaped Paddock 20 um, is the code. We'll get our code changed to Doobie Gooch soon, but it's Paddock 20 for now. So go and check that out. Stretford Paddock, my Shopify for the T-shirts. We've got loads of new ones coming as well. We've got a Jaden Sanchez one coming oh, um, and all that stuff. I spoke to Mike Phelan on Sunday. Yeah, no? I think that video is just about to drop. Once you finish watching this. Oh, it's not out? I thought no, it went out. No, it's not been out yet. Honestly, some belting stuff and some stuff off camera, but we'll talk about that another day. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the next podcast once he's got his release safely out. That sounded weird. See you later.